Hello everyone, welcome to my Royal Family official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. A party animal burdened with extravagant furs and large diamonds. She spent her days living off royal handouts after becoming entangled in a love triangle with a duchess and her husband, being expelled from Britain, Spain, and Italy, and almost dying on her wedding day. Queen Ana of Spain wasn't all beer and skittles. She was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria, the daughter of Princess Beatrice, born at Balmoral, and she had a lovely upbringing at Kensington Palace. She would later be known as the great-great-grandmother of Felipe VI, the current King of Spain, but only after a tumultuous life marked by exile, the Spanish Civil War, the Spanish flu pandemic, and haemophilia. Her eyes are a striking aquamarine, and the diarist Chips Channon described her as licentious and rather raunchy in her talk. Put another way, a little too naughty. Tragic events, however, followed her path. Her grandmother Victoria had given her the royal disease, haemophilia, which she would later pass on to her boys from her marriage. When the 20-year-old Spanish king Alfonso came to London in search of a bride, no one considered that conceivable. His eyes fell on Ina, or Princess Victoria Eugenie, as she'd been born, and soon afterward the two became engaged. The Spanish hated me because I wasn't born a Catholic. The British hated me because I converted to Catholicism. Ina would later gripe. As it happened, that was the least of her concerns. Anarchists threw a bomb hidden in a bouquet at the royal carriage as it passed on her wedding day in 1906. Ina and her new husband escaped unscathed, but her wedding gown was marred by the blood of the horse escort that had been severely wounded, a horrible portent for their future. In Spain, revolution was already in the air, and there was still much more to come. Alfonso, Prince of Asturias, the couple's first child, was born a year after they were married. However, it was found very quickly that he had haemophilia, which is the inability to stop bleeding from any unintentional damage. The king was devastated, and Ina made a heroic attempt to make things right by allowing herself to become pregnant very instantly. The next year, she gave birth to a second son. Sadly, this boy lost his ability to speak and hear by the time he was four years old. The couple's previous love vanished long ago, and they went on to have five more births over the course of seven years, including one stillbirth. Her suffering was disregarded by the Spanish, who had never been fond of their English queen. A well-known verse from the era was, Eight months of hardship for one month of joy. After three months off, back to work. What a life the Spanish queen has. After 15 years of marriage, the pair divorced as Alfonso exacted revenge on her for bringing the disease of haemophilia to the Spanish royal family. They had fled the nation before the civil war, which led to General Franco's ascent to power, and had relocated to Rome. The romance between Ina and the Duke and Duchess Rosaria Lessera ultimately led to the breakup, even if the king had slept with many women. The queen was furious and suspected her spouse of having an extramarital affair with the duke, with whom she was close. However, the duchess was also in love with Ina, unbeknownst to the king, according to Ina's biographer Gerard Knoll. He says defensively, Ina had no such proclivities, though the duchesses were well known, many governesses and maids had been fired from her service over the years under mysterious circumstances. Notably though, Inna responded in the plural when the monarch asked her to choose between her and the duke, saying she would not give up either her husband or her wife. After receiving orders to leave Italy, Inna returned to England and moved in with her mother, Princess Beatrice, who was living close to Kensington Palace. Despite the impending war clouds in Europe, she felt secure there and adopted a busy social life, becoming a regular guest at numerous get-togethers, her days of roaming were ended. Then, in August 1939, a day late, Anthony Eden, the foreign secretary, arrived on her door. He had come to advise her to leave the nation. Should war break out, 
he continued, he could not ensure her safety in England. In a legal sense, she had left the British royal family, even though George V.I., the king, was her first cousin. She needs to get ready and leave. He didn't say why, but she might pose a security danger. It was unknown whether or not Spain would join the Second World War, and if so, which side. Ina called the monarch at Buckingham Palace immediately, but he did not pick up. Rather, he sent her a note that said, I hope a visit to Balmoral will still be possible and that you will not be away for too long. Ina was aware that he didn't mean it. Her royal cousins had left her on her own and let her fend for herself. After running away, she spent the war in Switzerland. Periodically, Queen Mary would send her money to keep her afloat, strictly in violation of the wartime currency prohibitions. Bitterly, the Spanish Queen swore she would never return home to Britain. She was buried in Lausanne after her away in 1969. There are rumours that Prince Harry is thinking of cancelling his supposed planned trip to London. According to reports, the 39-year-old Duke of Sussex was preparing to return home in May to commemorate the Invictus Games' 10th anniversary. However, sources claim that Harry worries about his personal security since that he does not have government-funded security cover in the UK. The father of two is reportedly now considering making an appearance via video link or pre-recorded remarks instead. Harry's travels to the UK are contingent upon his level of security, an insider informed the Express. His security team must ensure that street poles is sufficiently protected by the Metropolitan Police and that his personal security needs are met while he's in London before determining whether to attend the Invictus Games anniversary event. The source continued, Harry wants to spend more time with his family in the UK, but there's no way he can do that while there is uncertainty surrounding his security detail. The source went on to say that Harry was extremely disappointed by his security, or lack thereof, in the United Kingdom. The Post has requested a statement from Harry's representatives. Although Harry's alleged trip is only rumoured, Street Paul's Cathedral is expected to host celebrations. It's unknown if his trip, which comes right after his 24-hour sprint in February, will be another solo endeavour. Harry and his 42-year-old bride, Meghan Markle, lost their sponsored police protection that month after they stopped being working royals and relocated to the US in 2020. As a result, the Sussexes will now need to cover the cost of their own protection when crossing the water. Harry's attorneys had requested a judicial review of the government's denial of his request to appoint police personnel to his personal security detail. The London High Court had originally rejected this request in May 2023. And in a devastating setback to his case, Harry was unable to overturn the decision of the London High Court earlier this month. In addition, he was mandated to cover 90% of the legal fees incurred by the UK Home Office in fighting the court's original decision. There are major legal ramifications and public interest in this latest chapter of the ongoing controversy around Prince Harry's immigration status. A legal action led by the conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation aims to reveal the conditions of the Duke of Sussex immigration arrangement as he establishes his permanent residence in the United States, perhaps establishing a difficult precedent for similar instances in the future. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.